Hey, Click This fans, want to get closer to the show than ever? Join Click This TV. With two levels to choose from, Click This TV offers early commercial-free access to wrestling's hottest podcast, plus live audience tapings of their show every friggin' week, and your chance to participate with Kevin and Sean in the monthly Nash and Friends Watch Along Show. Head to clickthistv.com now and get inside the show that's just too sweet. The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. Headbanging to our theme song, which you should not do right now. <laughs> right. Uh, before your trip to Colombia. What yeah. city? Medellin. Medellin. Oh, listen, you bringing some extra suitcases by any chance? <laughs> no. Nah. It's a beautiful country. Beautiful country, beautiful city. No, no problems. Yeah, no, no it's not like no. overrun with. No, it's twenty gangs years ago. And crime, it's all no. over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just check it. I mean, es- Escobar basically what he did was he went down there and built uh, an infrastructure of, uh, you know, uh, medical centers and schools and. I mean, he you know he was he was considered a Robin Hood to the people. Yes. And people that people that were uh, got caught up in the violence were people that were just were, were involved in the actual trade and trying to fuck people and you know that you know it wasn't like there was drive bys and shit like that. It was that's more Mexico, I think. The uh, yeah, you go down, although you go, I don't I don't know. I, I have you go down the, you go down to Medellin <clears throat> and it's like. You drive through the the, the cities, you know, through the city, and it's like everywhere you look, there's there's a, there's two guys in a shop putting together like handmade mirrors, and there's four guys in a in a mechanic thing working in bays. Like everybody's working their ass off. Everybody eats. Soup. There's there's no uh, preservatives in any of the food. It sits in a bowl. And it's like 86 degrees year round down there. It's like the most unbelievable, perfect place to grow poppy. Imagine that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, probably get into that someday. I yeah, think. they probably will. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous. The only thing missing, man, if if, if that had a, a any kind of a view of, of water, ugh. And at nighttime, there's, everything is like there's a, a billion high rises, right? And at nighttime, they have a, like these spectacular lightning and thunderstorms that kind of sit outside the bowl, and just kind of just give you something to look at. And it's just I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to going down there for for more of the chill factor, because this is like the this is the first time that I can can recall. That I'm traveling besides going up to Michigan, which was, you know, just too short, and then it was on on the end of a, you know, 13 out of 18 day tra- travel tour, you know, before I, I, I went to Michigan. That this will be the first time that I'm just I'm going down there to take care of my of some medical needs for myself, and also just fucking just chill. What about your accommodations? How are the uh, how are the places? You place stay? I stay at's gorgeous. Hooked to a mall. The mall's hooked to the medical center. So there's a there's a there's an unbelievable gym. There's four or five great restaurants inside the mall. And I'm, I'm not talking about fast food. I'm talking about sit down and eat a you know a twelve ounce chicken breast that's organic and pay like six bucks for it. Ooh. Yeah. Very good. You're having your neck addressed, though. 
that's my major concern. I, I had I had MRIs done, and my, my orthopedic doctor is Dr. Brad Holman, and uh, he called and we we went over it, and uh, he just said that you know my next. It's always been bad, but it's just getting worse, and uh, it's starting to you know the curves the wrong way, and I'm starting to get some compression on on some of my 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 nerves and. I've got stenosis, and I've just I've got a lot of things going on. The last time that I went down to a bioaccelerator, um, it was it was night and day, and it, I'm not kidding you. It was it was 12 to 18 hours after they injected my neck that um, that I got I, I got relief. I got instant relief, and so I'm hoping for the if I could get. Like my neck's been bothering me for like the last probably year, and uh, I went down to Chipsa in Tijuana. That's Ed Clay's place, and um, I just didn't. The fighter? He used to be a fighter. Yeah. Yeah, he used to be. Yeah. They're all yeah, and I just think that the um, they went into the side of my neck. And and bioaccelerated your face down, and they go and I just, I just seem to have gotten better results neck wise at bioaccelerated than I did Chipsa. So this uh, this can't be cheap. No, no, I, I'll find out what it would. I mean, I'm 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 going down as an influencer. So my job is to influence those. But to me, this is, I mean, if this doesn't work, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a, you know, at least a ground rule double. I mean, if I'm not standing on second when this bitch is over, then my next move is they're going to have to fuse my neck on, on several levels. And that's something I'm not. Looking forward to you know. Oh, you'll you'll move around like Greg Valentine in the ring for yeah, Christ's sake. Yeah, so you know, so this well, is kind of uh, good luck. Yeah, I, I mean, I, pay, I, I definitely paid the price. Yeah, and uh, so now I'm just I'm hoping you know that it's, it's a quick procedure. It is literally just a shot, multiple well, I mean, shots. Maybe I mean it's you know they're they're, they're putting injections. I actually have a picture like. It'll take me a couple seconds. I'll yeah, just... text text that to Steve. You can bring it up on the screen here. I so you I lay got... down face down, face down, and they they um, they do um, several. I think they do. I think they do. They check hold... the colon in the same visit. Could they? Because you could. While you're laying there, you may as well just I get think, a few I, things. Now I, I, I think that uh, even though you're kind of in twilight. Like the procedure's done kind of in, in, in a twilight procedure. I think that the, uh, I think the the uh, the actual uh, roughhousing of the colon might might cause for some uh, some some tightness of the neck. Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably you'd throw break off. The, a, you'd break the head of the syringe right off. Let me see if I can. I, I, I know I have a, a, a great picture of them. Oh, here it is, right here. So. Um, how, how do I get this? Just to text it. Uh, text the picture to Steve, and he can bring uh, it up on our screen for everybody. You'll be easy. You'll be easier for me to. Do. Oh, okay, and then I'll text it to Steve. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, let me see here. Go to gallery. Hello, Ryan. Uh, yes, we should tell everybody watching us or listening to us on Monday that. Uh, we are, uh, every week, we are a live audience taped show now, so we can interact with those that have become 11 soft members of Click This TV. In addition to that, they get exclusive stuff like Nash and Friends, which we'll remind you about next, uh, uh, remind you about in a little while. It's going to happen tomorrow night, Tuesday, when we're joined by Mr. Sean Waltman, x -Pac. Yay! More on that later. We'll see him tomorrow night. Um, but uh, yes, uh, this—you uh, get to be part of a live audience taping, and uh, and you know what? The great thing for those Nash and friends watch-alongs 
y'all sitting in the room here, you'll be up on the screen now in the uh, in little windows, Zoom style. Steve, I think it'll be StreamYard, though, will it not? All right, Steve, this should be this should be coming your way right now. We're making him far too busy. I'm asking him if the watch alongs will be StreamYard, and he's downloading a, a picture, tightening his belt. Got a lot going on over there. And and and, and still visualizing and have his colon checked. Yes, that's I think that's what knocked him off track. But um, yeah, so be part of all that with everybody here. Go to click this TV and find out how to friends like Jen and Gregory and. <coughs> I just want to. I, I just want to go on record. This is the first of maybe eight shows that I did not uh, consume THC prior to the. Uh, oh, you're breaking the. You're breaking the deal here. You're the. You know the what momentum. they 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 told me to. They, and there we go. So there's the, there's the, the some of the procedure there, and that's uh, yours truly, face down, and they're injecting uh, stem cells into my neck. Clearly, caught some of the Medellin sun before um, before going in for the procedure. I used to be a tan. I used to be, a, you know, tan. yeah. I got to realize, man, I was still working. So you got to keep that. You know, now I'm I'm not working, so I don't need to do any any more any more damage to my body than I have to. Exactly. I just want to be able to work out. So yeah, that's, that's it, that. man. Yeah, and yeah. it's going to happen. And we, uh, you will, you'll get the, uh, you'll get the real time results. And, I, if, and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, I, I will be doing the follow ups, and while I'm down there, I'll have a film crew follow me around. And oh, so this so. will be covered for, um, well, for, of course, for our show, but for uh, for also for Bio Accelerator, which I'll get the. I'll get the tape and run it on our show because, yeah. but right, uh, so, yeah. This any is... surgical footage? I love surgical footage. <laughs> First thing in the morning. So if we can run that, maybe uh, a few. Uh, there won't be any, uh, uh, there, there nose won't, jobs. There won't Whatever be any. Not, yeah, there won't be any. Uh, we're gonna have that uh, Doctor Pimple Popper. She's gonna come on. <laughs> and she's gonna get this fucking ingrown hair out of my ass before I travel again. I've been on so many planes in the last month. It's just like the one thing that you there's nothing you can do, man. It's just when your when your ass is goes from eleven hours on an airplane to two hours in a lounge to four hours at a bar to up in your room, lay in bed, right? Get up, get a little workout in, back on a bus, sit down nine hours in a chair in front of people signing. I mean, and then back on a, you know, do that for two days, back on a plane, it's like... You got chop meat on the fucking... Yeah, and, and, and you don't have your your scrub brush, loofahs, none of your shit with you. You got a washcloth. It's like, oh boy, that works well. So the next thing you know, you wake up and you got a golf ball, you know, in the fucking crack of your ass. So That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, it's time for HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store, guys. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Okay. HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners. Okay. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes. You heard that number, right? But you can choose from over 100 items to round out the order, from snacks to easy lunches to desserts and uh, pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery date that you choose. So you never have to worry about it sitting on the porch when you've got a commitment after work. You pick the day. It'll be there for you. This May, HelloFresh is celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Try limited time Authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Serbi Sani of New York City's Tagmo Restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste tour in your mouth. Kevin, when's the last time you had a cultural taste tour 
in your mouth. Not including this morning? Right in your own kitchen, no less. No, it wasn't in my kitchen. So uh, check save money off your growing to-do list with the help of HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and about 25% cheaper than takeout. Okay? So... Uh, I last thing I had from HelloFresh was the uh, Chipotle um, drizzled chicken was rather wonderful. Okay, so you're going to go to HelloFresh.com slash click 16. You know why 16, Kevin? You know why the number 16? Because you're getting 16 free meals plus free shipping. Boom. Courtesy of this show. Okay, HelloFresh.com slash click 16. Use the co- promo code. My sister-in-law is, is a huge. I turned around to that, and she's went crazy. Yeah. She's using the code. I hope I fucked up, and when I, when we when we placed our last order, didn't put a date. Is the mic behind you um, at this point, or, or is is it? No, it's right here. Is it it's right okay. here? Okay. Why wow, you can't? Much smaller. <clears throat> That's what she said. Oh. So what did you do? You put you put the wrong date? <laughs> no, I didn't put a date. So oh. they sent it and Tamara and I were both out of town. So when we came when we got home, uh Tamara got home on, on Monday uh, afternoon and I got home Monday at three AM, actually Tuesday, and we had a science project on our front porch. Right. Well that's so, why folks, the le- the takeaway here is make sure you put yeah, in you that got date. to because uh, and the thing is we were pissed because we looked. So now we had to we, we had to reorder, and uh, it's so, good stuff. Yeah, it is. It's it's and especially you know when it's like it's just it's just she and I now, and but you can get like the four meal kit. Yes. So my wife eats one and I eat three. Right. So it's like it's like absolutely perfect for us. Perfectly portioned for the Nash home at this point. Absolutely. Well, they are uh, America's number one meal kit, and for a reason. And you'll find out when you go to HelloFresh.com. HelloFresh.com slash click 16. Get your 16 free meals. Thank you, HelloFresh. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely not. Um, uh, Some feedback uh, from y'all. Blake Mead says, LOL. At this point, Punk is playing the dirt sheets and marks like a cheap fiddle. And I'm so here for it. We kind of said it might be a negotiation uh, strategy, or no? He remember when he did this? He took the belts around to indie things. Yeah, this is all he's doing is getting his name out there because he's gonna he's gonna kick off that Saturday show for AEW, right? Well, I I mean I <clears throat> I think that I really dug that when when that belt thing happened, which what was that ten years ago now maybe. Probably not 10. But anyway, I, I thought, oh God, I just thought they could have gotten such legs out of it. They could have really run with that. 12 years, Tom? Jesus Christ. Um, uh, and, and just really run with it and, and not made it any part of, or seemingly not any part of WWE. Literally have him pop up with a belt. You don't have to send a camera crew. Everyone's got phones. It would be out there. Wherever he went, it would be out there. And they could have stretched a year out of that fucking thing, him going all over yeah, the place. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't it doesn't put any fucking any money into the fucking well, the kitty for the WWE. Well, he could be coming back. He could be coming back to the tapings to to, to the to Raw. But then during the but week, then, then what does that do? Then, then it's bogus because it was done in a month. It's it's all you can get out of something oh, like that. I, I, I don't believe that. I I, I think they could have. Okay, how that. how many times can fucking David Copperfield make the Statue of Liberty d- disappear in a month? But it would change. It would change. You <laughs> you'd see people trying to to cut him off in Butte, Montana, at the VFW, and then an impromptu fucking match happens in the ring with him and one of the one of the WWE yeah, roster. Th- then all you need is all you need is some fucking shooter. To fucking get get a hold of them and get a one two three someplace on them and they got no 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 you, it would be a WWE worker you'd send a oh, worker who I'm, who, who I'm just saying when you when you're out there doing that shit you got a chance to have somebody fucking get on the fucking loud, loud horn and say by the way CM Punk's match his belt is now a, a, a 24-7. and some fucking shooter from <laughs> North Dakota 
comes over there and fucking, you know. What a great story. He adds a little danger. Yeah. Adds a little danger. And fuck, you, you, thought, you thought they went through enough fucking uh, <laughs> bullshit to, to, to stop fucking Brett, you know, with, with you know, the screw. The screw <laughs> yeah. You thought the screw, the screw job, Jesus Christ, the screw job was planned more, better, better than the fucking uh, Kennedy assassination. Yeah, It'd be the, great to have Michael show up and, and, and fucking shoot on Punk. Don't even tell Punk it's going to happen. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Jeff Childs. All of a sudden, turn around, Earl's there. What the fuck? That yeah, brilliant. Uh, Jeff Childs says, uh, do you really have to pick a political side? I like Trump, and I like Tucker. I don't mind if you like the other side at all. Don't matter to me. But the way you go about it is insulting to Republicans. And I love Nash and always have. Love you, Sean, always have. Let's play nice. Okay, number one, Trump to, today uh, stated that he is not a Republican. Well, he's never so, been. We right. kind of know he's, that. But he's not a Republican, and he's that's, that's why they lost the midterms, is because they, they, they tried this GOP shit, and he's always been every man, and he's not a Republican, so... Tucker Carlson definitely isn't a fucking Republican. Um, what was uh, was Megyn Kelly? That's who was there before at Fox. The announcer, yeah, Megyn Kelly. She. I saw a piece today that since Tucker's left, Tucker was Hannity's uh, uh, feed. Hannity's down forty percent. Laura Ingalls down 45%. Fox on a whole has lost 60% of their fucking viewership. I mean, it's... And they're saying that, you know, they're, no, the, the people are interchangeable. Not at this point, people aren't interchangeable. The personalities, you mean, on the... Uh, yeah, on they the, were, you know, they, they, when Bill O'Reilly... Like, Bill O'Reilly leaving... Bill O'Reilly didn't conjure bill o'reilly didn't get the fucking january 6th tapes <laughs> sent to him exclusively as, no, as, he as, straddled as, the line a, a lot more yeah as, as we also find out that you know that that was part of mccartney mccarthy getting his you know the the, the speakership is you know fucking Tuck, tucker was pulling the strings on that whole fucking deal so there's i'm not talking about playing nice I'm just all we all do is calling it down the middle, man. Like fuck, if your guy if your guy fucking swings the three pitches, he's out. That's that's just baseball. That's what I was gonna say, uh, Jeff. And uh, you know, uh, I, I give you respect for uh, posing it as a question and not an insult, which is what so many people uh, feel they've been given well, have been given implicit permission to do um, by a lot of the douchebags. Uh, that find elected office and um, confront issues that they diverge from by insulting the other side rather than just presenting their case uh, as if in a courtroom. So, Jeff, um, I'm, I'm sorry you liked I don't know what there is to like about Trump other than the entertainment value. So, I mean, it, it, there were a lot of politicians you could have said here that you like that we could have had a debate about that. I, I, I can't even debate that, that you like Trump or and, and Tucker was a snake oil salesman, and you see that. So, what I think that I don't know. I mean, I, I think that I, during the news cycle, that it's good for the uh, the top. Uh, let's just say we, we, he he used the term Republican. So your your top Republican uh, candidate has got a civil suit for rape. Um, didn't say. Like, when they showed the deposition tape of, of Trump, he pretty much didn't sound like a narcissist when he said he was a star. And you know, then, then he goes on to say that um, she's not my type. She was not my type. It couldn't have happened. But the thing was, the the best one was, you know, it's been like this. You know, you can grab the you can grab their pussy. It's been like that for a thousand years, or maybe more. Oh, that tape, the... Uh, yeah, that, the deposition. The, he said it could be... A, no, he said he said he, they, they made reference to that. Oh, oh, During oh, the okay. deposition, and, and, and Trump said that that's a you know that could be a, a, a bad thing or could be a good thing. <laughs> what? What? Moronic. 
Well, Jeff, when you said, you know, insulting Republicans, not insulting you. I mean, you, you brought up your point here. Um, I'm sure you could have gone further about why you like uh, these individuals. But what, what tends to happen is it goes very personal. Well, well, we'll continue to read the feedback. I think I have one in there somewhere. Uh, uh, David's PS deals. Good, good job numbers this, this month ago. Good. Oh, the, in the jobs report. Yeah, yes. uh, unemployment down to three point four percent. Absolutely, we're working. <laughs> now, all, now all you got to do is the, 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 that last three point four percent. Give them a musket and put them down there on the border before we get overrun. And <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> Joe. What are the what are the population levels? We know what the what the job numbers are. What, what did our population go up to in the last month? Exactly. In fact, they. they they went down today. I was watching the news this morning. They went down, and some girl was at the wall. And uh, there's, I mean, it's like it looks like the, like a stadium seating for the Who. They're waiting to get in, and she said, "Well, it appears to me that the that the uh, yeah you know, the deluge of uh, refugees has already showed up." It's, it's horrendous, we've man. Talk, we've talked about this. Yeah, there's for people down there with the people. That... People down there with the and it, and the great thing is this, is they show the shot and they're at like our portion of the wall, and in the background, 400, 500 yards away, is the Mexican wall, which they are clearly between the Mexican and so what, exactly what's going on over there at that that Mexican wall. That's called the neutral zone. I think they're. I think they're That's using. The party I, think, zone. I think they're using our app on there. Fucking finding openings, openings to, to buy tickets to get through the uh... <laughs> game time. <laughs> yeah, game time selling section 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 six four of the gate. We'll have an opening for from noon to two tomorrow. I have to check the app. Maybe it's on there. You could hit it. You can get a view into the United States. Yeah, like a seat view. You know, you David's de- PS deals. De- uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to come in, you know, into the Rio or anything like that. You want some, you want some, some solid footing when you when you get absolutely. To the other side. Yeah, no, I don't want to get wet. No. Uh, David says, listening at work right now, uh, overnight grocery stocking. Sean brought up the pine, the pine tar incident. What about the George Brett shitting his pants story? I would love to hear your reaction. Played it on the podcast as well as any stories of wrestlers shitting their pants. I'm not familiar with the Brett, uh, the uh, George Brett shedding his pants. Are you? Uh-uh. Okay, I'll have to. I'd have to look into that, David. But uh, we hear sometimes Andre had some bowel issues. Um, I don't know how intentional it was. Maybe on someone he didn't care for, or you know, when you consume 178 cans of beer and you know four bottles of wine and who knows how many steaks or burgers or whatever the fuck he used to eat <clears throat> they said you never really ate andre just drank yeah wasn't a real big eater <laughs> after his calories through after, yeah after fermented a, grapes after and, 100 and uh, se- after 178 beers what do you really got room for like a couple of buffalo That's wings <laughs> talk about bloat Jeez. old horseshoe greetings mr oliver I've enjoyed watching these videos. I know you from before, when we were children. I've been watching A&E's Legends and Rivals series with great enjoyment. I've started collecting the action figures. You know me. You might say you're shot. My grandfather went for Hogan, but I always liked Piper. Dominoes and Darkseid. Thank you, everybody. I know who this is. And I could do a whole show on, on this individual. I'll call him... I'll call him Zeta. So he can still say anonymous. I think he has a family now. Um, So if you can imagine a character somewhere between, you know, very intelligent, I think might have been the valedictorian or maybe number two in the class to the Cuban doctor uh, son. Uh, But if you can imagine a character between uh, maybe someone on Big Bang Theory, one of those kids, and Tommy Chong with the amount of weed he smoked. He said he wanted to smoke so much that he would become a floating entity named Zeta. So I will call him Zeta because that was his goal. His reference to Dominoes and Darkseid, and God, I'm 
my mind, I, I've forgotten more in life than I remember. When I saw this, I remembered. It's a testament and an actual, a, a recusal, of, a, a, I mean, a, a refuting of anyone who says that extensive THC use does anything to your memory because the fact that he remembered this. That was just a reference, I think, in college to so much, uh, uh, bo so many bong hits to Dark Side of the Moon until I was prone and pretty much unable to do anything but eventually crawl to the phone and dial dominoes. And just uh, the CD would stay on the loop, and we would just, there was a period, there was a lost summer where me and he, uh, uh, Zeta would just be locked in his apartment and immobile. I think I've, I, I've, I've told the story here before, right, where I got, I got stoned and fell asleep, and it was on, we had the eight track. It was episode seven. And it was, it was uh, comfortably numb, and I woke up and I thought I wrote the motherfucker. <laughs> I have a great idea for a song. <laughs> I was telling somebody like, "Dude, this comes with me." And I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> yeah, I guess, brilliant. I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, dark side and dominoes, man. But God, uh, tell me that wasn't great, just stoner music. Is anybody? I <laughs> know. Wow, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. My favorite story of his, though, I have to just tell this before we move on. In one of our stupors, he unearths a videotape that his father made of his father banging these women. Homemade porn. Now, I didn't know his father, so this to me was very amusing, this uh, middle-aged Cuban man uh, riffing in broken English as he tours the bed with this woman. How we, now, two uh, more straight-laced uh, friends of ours are coming to pick us up to take us to a party. And uh, he invites them in. He puts this tape on. And you know, like they grew up with him. It's so, like they know his father. It was like, and they just sit down on their bed. I remember them covering their mouths like this, watching him go to town on this woman, like posing on the bed. And, oh, so he's American oh, Psycho in this bitch. Yeah, it's crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. All right, Zeta, thanks for checking in. Uh, I joke. know, I I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You what got, the fuck? Got weird what, for the, a minute. what the fuck does that mean? Like, I I know. Does that does that mean I know where you live still? He's what he got. What what kind of fucking in my window? What's what kind of what kind of tapes has he got of you? I don't know, right? That's true. I, I I might have used his place with a few young women in in my time. I don't know uh, if recording devices. Either that or that's a, there might be some kind of uh, like. Bond with Domino's where you can't chip on the Little Caesars wagon. I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't as accessible to us uh, up here. Domino's was here, but I don't know about the uh, about the Little Caesars deal. I, I don't. I think Domino's was was later in life for us. Oh yeah, maybe for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joel Delama twenty three. We were on the wavelengths. LOL. I read this about a month ago been reading more stoic philosophy i highly recommend checking out meditations of marcus aurelius okay this is your, you mentioned your reading material and you were you were working on the subtle art of not giving a fuck you can pick up the meditations of marcus aurelius to follow up your philosophical readings is, you know, isn't is, is, was it, wasn't that russell crowe's character's name in gladiator <laughs> Was he Marcus Aurelius? <laughs> oh, fuck up. So, 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 da pretty damn fucking close. Um, Jack's Dagger. Kevin is one of the few remaining old timers doing this type of stuff that I have any respect for. Doesn't have a huge chip on his shoulder. Uh, doesn't dump on everything and anything just because the fans are or aren't behind it. Just genuine opinions and most of the time nothing but positivity. That's why I keep coming back. Keep it up, guys. Speaking of, I watched the opening match of uh, AEW on Wednesday. It was I had a DVR when I got home, and uh, Cole was back. Rodney Strong was back, and. They had a good match. They had an eight man at the beginning of the show. It was against the Jericho Appreciation Society. And uh, I liked it because Cole, on, on several occasions, tried to get to Jericho, who was doing color, 
and he was he was cut off, and then finally, Jericho at the at the end, when Adam Adam went over and then like beelined right up to Jericho, got to Jericho pretty damn good, and um, then, then 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 big ass security came and busted it up. Not you know. Didn't look like uh, some, somebody's preschool. Not me. Didn't look like preschoolers. Uh, and then, but J- Jericho sold it like, uh, he, like Jericho isn't afraid to like be a heel and give. And he was, t- but he, when he comes out, like, he, when he came, when he comes out, you know, he's got that. He's got his own fozzy. The people sing. You know, it's he's obviously the the, the star. Um. But you know, Orange Cassidy was in it was in the match. Um, Bandito, who I'm not real familiar with, I'm not. He was you know, mm-hmm. but uh, but and the thing was like Rodney Cole and and, I, and did you did Wesley or Dom, Dom or anybody? Adam see? Cole. I mean Adam yeah. Cole. Yeah. Um, No, Rodney Strong. Rodney Strong, though. Roddy Strong. Rodney Strong. Okay. Stro- Rodney Strong um, had an open spot. Who, who did he open with on on the Jericho? I mean, the shit was crisp. It just, it, it just. Now, was, are you watching for research? Do you have any intention to ever do anything down there? You think? No, I just because I I, I spent time with with Adam. Uh, when we were in, in, in Manchester, and I just told him, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll watch, you know. He just said, watch and see if you see anything. I said, all right, because I liked his shit when he was in NXT. And, um, you know, he's coming off the, the concussions. So my whole thing was I wanted to make sure he wasn't doing anything fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. And he didn't. He, he, works, he worked smart and strong. And it was, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the match. Told a good story. Jericho gave something, you know. Right. And I moved the story along, so. All right. And I think I think him and Chris are, have got a match coming up. Uh, Kixie 2023. Oliver thinks he is interesting, but this is a Nash podcast. If he shut up and let Nash talk, I could stay tuned. Now, for those of you guys that need to know how this works on, on the YouTube comments, You'll see four or five very similar uh, troll, like, attacking type comments. And when you click in and you see, you can very easily see this is basically the same person who's made five accounts to see. So you find some of the same political tone and maybe an insult to Kev, an insult to me. Uh, Nothing really factual or anything exquisitely written, very base, you know, third grade sitting in front of the trailer with yesterday's bomb pop still on your mouth with rickets, uh, that type of uh, vibe, uh, that type of mentality. And then, and that's how it works. So that's, you know, that's where you go to. So guys, you can feel free on YouTube, tune out the dipshits, you know. The more, the more, and you know what, guys, the more that bail because of politics, somehow our numbers go up. Yep. Yep. And the thing is, it's not, God, it's not even... You would you would think that politics were like farming, were like agriculture, you know? Like it's it's not. This isn't the crop report. We're talking about the fucking. We're talking about the United States of America continuing to be a democracy. And, and it's like I don't know about the rest of you. I just don't want to live in a fascist. In Florida, shit gets passed all the fucking time. And you don't know about it until it's passed. And it's like, what the fuck? What? They did right. what? So, yeah, this, it doesn't work that way. Right. Well, Kixie, sorry to see you go. I'm sorry I, I talked too much for you. Maybe I'll you know, sure it, you it's really it hard. It's entertaining podcast. It's, it's really hard to have a conversation with one person talking. 
It's I've tried it before. Most of the time, you end up in a fucking seventy-two hour observation. <laughs> I was going to say, well, Kixie's side of the ward. That must happen a lot. Hey, this is the National Treasure, Nick Aldis, and I am recommending that you go to SaveWithConrad.com for all your home buying needs. Not only would I recommend Save with Conrad to friends and co-workers, I have many times already. If I know that they're house hunting, my first recommendation to them always is get in touch with Conrad. His team are the real deal and they will they will be straight up with you and, and do everything they can to, to get you in the house. NMLS number 65084 equal housing lender. Woo! At savewithconrad.com. Guys, tomorrow night, the debut of Nash and Friends. I'm so excited with uh, X-Pac, Sean Walton. They're going to cover the action. So That'll be it. Wait, it'll be Nash and Friend. <laughs> well, well, you could get the aggregation of all episodes are all your friends. But uh, we'll be there. We'll, me and Sean, that's Sean Squared, will be representing yes. two, yeah, two of okay. the many Seans. Two, 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 of my, two, two of my three friends. When I'm on the phone with Kevin, if Tamara's like, who are you on the phone with? He's like, Sean. Uh, I mean, Oliver. <laughs> um, so remember, you got to be part of the 11 soft uh, level of uh, members, and you'll be allowed inside, and you're, you'll be on camera. You'll be participating, chilling, asking questions. Uh, so sign up now. Click this TV.com. This is a really good match. Like, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a spot. I'm not going to blow it. Uh, but there's a spot in here that it, it, every time I've ever seen it, I pop like fuck that, that Waltman does in this match. It was one of Scott's favorite favorite uh, spots that 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 kid ever did. So we'll uh, we'll keep it as a surprise for tomorrow. Night. Yeah, we'll keep it for tomorrow night. Um, I, I want to bring up uh, Joe Biden for a moment because he mentioned there was a piece in the Saturday Times about uh, a comment he made about slowing delivery and export of chips high the high-end high-speed computer chips to china he said for a competitive advantage okay so that was a, a business spin but when you dig deeper the article covers it these chips are going to be part of an an, an arms race basically as ai begins to creep more, it's already there, it begins to creep further and more sophisticatedly, if that's even a word, into weaponry and the development of arms. I didn't know this, Kevin. I mentioned it to you and you, were, and you had heard about it. The, um, the, the Patriot, Patriot missile yeah. devices have an automated mode that they could go into off of manual. They say it has to be supervised by an adult overseen by an adult, but it can go in to automated mode. So when you consider how many opportunities for weaponry, I mean, this is Hollywood coming to life now, um, and these chips are what are going to be driving this uh, this artillery and these complicated... And you, and you also see the batteries of Patriot missiles that we have sent to the Ukraine. <laughs> why, 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 why people say... Well, you know, we must have troops over there because how could they work such a sophisticated system? <laughs> Siri's running it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, look at chat GPT. I mean, you can have a, a conversation with your mm. computer who knows anything. Um, so, you can right, actually, so I, I, I actually use my, my mind to, to sell... Uh, Real estate to, 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 to the Supreme Court members. It's ah, crazy. Cool. You'll have some takers, at least one. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so I, and you would think that a guy that loves Walmart and trailer parks would, would not be really into selling real estate to billionaires. But then again, you know, what the fuck do I know? Probably some, uh, some Daytona Beach waterfront property old long dong also some lots at least yeah primed for development absolutely but to get to the chips did you, did you see that thing i sent you i watched the video I, i'm gonna bring it up in a second um uh we're slowing the delivery of chips to asia 
th- what can I infer from this? Can I say that they don't have the technology to produce this yet in that part of the world? I find that hard to believe. Well, they do they, because the number the, the number ninety percent of all semi semiconductor chips are manufactured in Taiwan. Which that's why China has decided that they've claimed it is part of their territory because they can't. All China can do is counterfeit. They can replicate, but they can't. They can't create. Can't create, right? So, name the last great Chinese film you watched. I'll wait. Um, but at the same time, if, if it's if if, if this. Uh, I don't think I'd be letting them motherfuckers just do whatever they want. Like, I'm not going to have a drill with the South Koreans next to the North Korean border to piss off when I should be making sure that, because what what, what the fuck, you know, I, I take care of the chips. We 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 had the pandemic and we we didn't we didn't sell a car for three fucking years. Yeah, and it's still the whole that whole industry is still upside down because of that. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting aspect to the arms development that I hadn't considered that is going to be on my mind now. See, and that's so so when is when we talk politics and we talk the rudimentary Tucker Carlson Trump Biden politics, that's Kind of like fucking playing the game sorry. You just fucking roll the dice and you go around, you tap a guy and you go, sorry! And you got to go back to the beginning. Then there's geopolitical. Shit that fucking makes the, the earth end. And that is... If you want to really talk... at the it, it, you, you guys can sit there with the fucking, you know at the little kid's table at Thanksgiving the, your whole life. I'd rather be at the big boy table. I don't give a fuck. Well, I think they lump it all into the same basket. Those, they, the very, they, the they very small, we're talking about the very even, small percentage of people that come They don't even get it. They don't even get it. Like they, 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 you, they just love their, they love their person. They're, they're fully indoctrinated. You can't talk about Tucker or Trump. This is, and they throw this into, this isn't politics. Something like no. this, talking about the, arms development and chip development and how AI is going to be incorporated into weapons and they are now we don't even really know it that's not politics no. and you know for anyone keeping score because those douchebags are on there sometimes too they, oh you all you all say you're centrist but I was I was critical of Joe Biden saying he didn't go into enough detail about why exactly not critical but I, I brought up a question as to why we can't really know why chips are being slowed to that part of the world it's an arms competition not a business competition and um earlier we were talking about the fucking wall and that and that 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 had gotten out of control down there and we've done this for weeks so clearly these people don't listen guys it's one person making four accounts just being stupid you just gotta ignore like we, we like we talked about earlier if 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 the democrats would fucking play hardball and be like fucking johnson and get a Senate subcommittee and climb up Thomas's ass and just fucking keep feeding that fire. It's, there'll be so much fucking smoke you won't be able to see the fucking illegal aliens crossing the fucking Hopping over the wall. <laughs> no, not a chance. I mean, it's like, but we the the, the fucking the Dems don't do that. No, I, I've said for a long time they they had the, they what was the phrase when when Clinton was running? They go low, we go high. Fuck that doesn't always work. You got to swing back. I say, I, I say I say do the Ronnie Lot. Fucking hit him up high and pray somebody takes him off down low. Fuck that man. Ronnie Lot number forty two. Hit him. Hit the motherfuckers. Hall of Fame cornerback. Cornerback or safety? Oh, fuck beast. Safety. What? Beast. Fucking, beast. Fucking, <laughs> Safety. Okay. Fucking roaming linebacker. Uh, guys, uh, talking about cutting off uh, friends, family, loved ones. If you have not purchased a Father's Day gift yet, and maybe you haven't because we're, we're still a month away, 
Uh, don't fear, okay? The leaders of the below-the-waist grooming Ooh. products are here. I'm talking about our friends at Manscaped. They're saving the day yet again with the uh, the total package for the father figure in your life this year. It's time to upgrade his game from waist to face with this exclusive offer. Okay, have him join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get 20% off plus free shipping if you use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at manscaped.com. All right, let's start with the ultimate Father's Day MVP, it's the Performance Package 4.0. Inside the package is going to have the lawnmower, the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, and then uh, the new Weed Whacker 2.0. That's the ear and nose hair trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner. Tell Pops, listen, when that bag starts sticking to your fucking legs in the middle of summer, hit that shit with the toner. Just carry it around in your bag. Performance Boxer Briefs. I do enjoy that. I have a couple of pairs of those. And they even give you a travel bag to hold... All of the goodies, okay? Father's Day is coming up. Now, if, if Dad is sporting a beard, like Mr. Nash does, you've got that covered, too, with the Beard Hedger Pro Kit for fathers all over the world. you get got the Beard Hedge Trimmer, Beard Shampoo, Conditioner, Beard Oil, Beard Balm, two free gifts, and a signature Beard Comb and Scissors. Okay, get 20% off and free shipping with the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Make this Father's Day one he will not forget with Manscaped. And Manscaped is sponsoring this week the Stiff One of the Week. Always look forward to this segment. Always look forward to it. It's a perfect pair for our for our friends at, uh, at uh, Blue Chew, who sometimes also... Uh, sponsor this segment uh, but this week manscaped is bringing us a home video okay of somebody who play, you know, not one of zetas or his father oh. um but uh I thought we we're gonna see ricky ricardo fucking somebody <laughs> <laughs> this was um ah, this was uh this was a, an eagles fan who probably wagered a little too much more money too much money than he should have on the Super Bowl. And uh, here's him watching uh, uh, his money dissipate in the form of a field goal. Um, no! Hey, fuck, oh, man. Man. Oh, I got too much fucking money on this shit, man. No! Man. no. no. Steve, I wanted you to play the stiff one. You, that's House Party 3 that's coming out uh, next week. I was looking for the stiff one of the week. Kev, you ever lose <laughs> that amount of money where that became your living room? And you add, add 400 for the Roku on the wall? Uh, <laughs> Those of you listening, that was a TV being destroyed in a, uh, a sea of profanity, is exactly that was for our many listeners out there. Number one, how the fuck did he not think the guy was going to hit a 23-yard field goal? <laughs> He was, he was, I would have, I would have fucking smashed it before the play. Why? I was going to say, <laughs> TV wouldn't have Jesus, even played the kick. Exactly. <laughs> fuck that. Oh, wouldn't it have right. made, made more sense just to walk out the fucking room before the kick? You don't want, why watch it? Ugh. Why watch it? Dear Sexy, uh, two letters, two actual letters to Dear Abby from the annals. Of, anals. Uh, from the ain from the, <laughs> the anals, dear, of uh, of dear Abby's collection. What if they asked Kevin Nash? What if they asked Big Sexy instead of dear Abby? What advice would they have gotten? Uh, let's find out. Dear Sexy, because of a serious illness that resulted from taking a certain medication, I recently received a settlement of more than a million dollars. I have invested most of the money and have a cash flow sufficient to take care of emergencies and a few luxuries. I must make sure that these funds will cover medical expenses for the remainder of my life. 
Ever since I received the settlement, my family, children, parents, siblings, think I'm very rich and that my money is their money too. They constantly ask me to bail them out of, uh, of fi one financial mess or another or buy them luxury items. I have helped them out of tight spots in the past, but they have always squandered their money and have never saved a dime for the future. I go to bed at night sick to my stomach because of the guilt trips they put on me uh, when I refuse their requests for money. They expect me to pay for everything. Sexy, am I being selfish? That's from SF in Colorado. Well, number one, sit them the fuck down and, ch I mean... <laughs> A million dollars? Jesus, you couldn't. If you were 73 years old and they gave you a million dollars, you might have enough to fucking make it to your, to your croak. Fucking hell, man. That's nothing. In today's world? Mm. And, and, and he's, he's using, he, he invested... Bought, bought himself a couple of things, and he's going to pick up his medical expenses. Correct. And, and, the, and the children are bilking him dry. Or her. It didn't say it. Didn't yeah, say it. it was a woman I, or a man. I'm sorry, man. It's just, I, I tell people all the time that the bank of Nash is closed. You know? Did, was there a time where you were getting phone calls? I, in my, yeah. Because when you, when you were first hitting it, but yeah, people always. There's a lot of people, man. That, that even friends, guys in the business, that fucking oh. borrow five grand and fucking fly down here to borrow five grand more. I'm like, well, you didn't pay the last five. Oh, I will. With what? The five I'm going to give you? <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm like what yeah. the fuck, man? But if it's but when it's family, children difficult right but you're no. saying that uh, sf in san francisco sh uh, colorado rather should sit them down and say done handle your own I, shit. yeah because who's going to be there for me when when this shit runs out my dad my stepdad got built just absolutely fucked over and coast why'd you do it to him though no he from his fucking his he got remarried and that his his uh, his, his kids from his, the first marriage from his second from his from his second oh from his second fucking just you know and he'd he, you know sign you know sign a co-sign something and they'd fucking go belly up on it and you know just fuck that shit you, 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 number one don't let him don't let him start and 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 shame on you for fucking waving the fucking the settlement in the first place well i think that the, they probably it sounded like the kids weren't aware of how much they all thought there was an endless amount of money i think uh well how how, how would they know i recently i wouldn't received... tell it i wouldn't tell them that i had any in the first place i wouldn't tell my yeah i got the settlement it was 40 grand can you okay. can you imagine fucking how fucking pissed off i am that's what you do then they don't come around asking for fucking money. If you tell them like one of a, a million bucks to most fucking losers is a, is a lot of money, buys a lot of meth. Especially if you throw some cut on that bitch. That's right. Stretch that shit, dear sexy. I'm 27 years old. When I was 18, I got married because my girlfriend was pregnant. We're now divorced, and my son lives with me because my ex refused to be responsible for him. She ran off with her new boyfriend. I've just learned that my son isn't really my son after all. My ex finally admitted to me that she had always known he wasn't mine and that his real father died of a drug overdose in 1996. A DNA test will prove it this week. I'm extremely frustrated because I don't know, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't feel I should have to take care of a child who isn't even mine. I love the boy, but I don't feel he's my responsibility anymore. I was tricked into being his father. I would have taken the job had I known eight years ago he was someone else's. We have a very close relationship, and I take... It doesn't sound like it, bro. No. And I take good care of him, but I would like to live my life for myself and do what I want when I want, like his mother does. I can't do that because he's my responsibility. I know he needs me and loves me. I'm afraid of what it would do to him if I sent him to live with his mother so I could live my life. I'm so confused, sexy. Could you give me any advice so that I can... So... I can compromise my desires and his needs. Signed, used in North Carolina. 
Most of the times when you're contemplating something like this, it always helps if in the background you hear, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Um, Total episode. I mean, did Chris Christopherson write that? Was it fucking walking contradiction? I mean, you're either, he's either your kid or he's not. I mean, blood's one thing, but if you've raised a kid and you're, you, got, you guys are tight, what exactly are you going to do? You're going to be miserable if you give it, give them back to the mom. Like when she fucking bolted on the first, on, on, that's when you you do the DNA test, right? When 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 yeah, you when you many when you started now, that like... and you said I got married when I was 18 because my wife got pregnant. I was going to say, was it yours? That was the first thing that was going to come out of my mouth. And the kid's nine now, right? He said he's 27, 18. So, yeah, eight or yeah, nine. That's, fuck, dude. It's a little late in the game to kick him to the yeah. curb. It's pretty fucked, actually. He looks like, he looks like you've got another uh, nine seasons before you can kick him to the curb. So, yeah. Exactly. Get, get get him in a fucking trade school, man. Get that motherfucker welding on the side when he's twelve. <laughs> bring it, get get to bring it home thirty k. Fuck it, man. You can you can carry an acetylene torch when you're nine, strapped to your back. Right? Well, yeah. You can, the worst case scenario, if I can learn learn it to you know do some a some AI, if I can run run, run a Patriot unit. Oh, everybody, but please be mindful that this episode is brought to you, among others, by uh, Get Blitzed and their nano-infused Delta 9 THC Sip and Syrup Lit Aid. I'll say that again for anyone who's confused. The nano-infused Delta 9 THC Sip and Syrup Lit Aid. Um, listen, some of my friends, maybe some of us sitting here, have uh, had a shipment delivered to our home. <laughs> Me and Kevin are trading texts as we have these bottles that look like cough syrup. <laughs> and once I, I remember nobody sm nobody smarted me up, but I'm looking at this going, this is THC nano. It's like this is, and you know I, I'm in Florida. Yeah, I got a medical marijuana card, but I don't have a, you know, something to mix a cocktail with. Which is exactly, uh, exactly what is. you. There it is. There it is. Which is exactly what you do with these bad boys here. Um, when I was a kid, there was there was Kool Aid, and then there was Funny Face, and this looks like this looks like the the, the like the Funny Face, like the cra like this would make a. And word has it that this stuff actually is pretty potent. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Um, You've uh, so we've tried the Delta Nine sip and syrup, and this is some super potent stuff. Like uh, think THC on steroids. Okay, it's a syrup. You mix it in any beverage, like a tea or a, a white soda, maybe, and with as little as a teaspoon. Okay, you goes well. Goes well with diet Seven Up. I so I heard. So you hear. <laughs> I hear. So in the onset of about five to fifteen minutes. You're rocking and rolling, okay? Nano-infused means it goes right into your bloodstream, bypassing the breakdown of the liver, so it works like alcohol. And uh, it's a tolerance killer. Uh, there is no gas station Delta-8 bullshit. This is the real deal THC Delta-9, the THC you get from marijuana. Best of all, it's legal to ship right from the Get Blitzed website to all 50 states without a med card as long as you're over 21, and right now you can save 15% by entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout. Once again, it's legal to ship to all 50 states without a med card, okay? So go uh, go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-blitzed.com, uh, B-L-I-T-Z-E-D, and uh, try the Delta 9 THC Sip and Syrup Lit Aid from Get Blitzed. And there's only one place you get it. That's get-blitz.com. Don't forget the promo code KLIQ. Save 15%. Thank you, Get Blitzed. And welcome to Click This. Comes with a supercar. I, apparently from the commercial. <laughs> um, 
I that looked like ran, a, that looked like a party, didn't it? It really did. It really did. Clearly, all listeners of the podcast there, for those of you who watched the uh, commercial playing underneath, those of you listening should be watching too. Um, I would I would go back and watch this show on YouTube just to watch that commercial. Just to watch that car roll up at the was it a gas station, a supermart, wherever they were. Look like uh, Boot, Boot, look like Bootsy Collins was was waiting for him to pull up there. Very hip <laughs> reference. You are <laughs> definitely a brother from another mother. So I ran into Billy Corgan in the newspaper today. Uh, they did a little, uh, he did a little uh, like the top ten, I think they call it, or ten best or something in the, in the Times and. I got to thinking about his wrestling career and um, his time in creative. And some other names came to mind. And I I wonder from a wrestler's perspective, working for someone... It's a different time now, I understand. But there was a credibility years ago, okay? So, like, let's talk about 70s maybe, okay? And a credibility to people that you were taking orders from or that were giving you creative direction. And there was uh, maybe uh, some some credibility, some creds that you would have wanted in professional wrestling. Be- being a fan and having money from another form of entertainment wouldn't have cut it. Like Tony Orlando couldn't have walked into the Louisville Gardens, no matter how much money he had, and been allowed to become a member of creative. Now, if it would have came with Dawn. Depends on what angle he was booking. Exactly. But, I mean, it's a different story now, right? So Billy Corgan, a fan, um, and I think was first involved in the Chicago-based indie promotion called Resistance Pro. Was it, was it Bob Mould with us before that? Bob Mould, I'm going to cover him. Uh, entirely, because that's another question that I always ask. Like I ask Russo on camera. I feel like Mold was nine. Uh, was the yeah the the like uh, the like late nineties Monday Night War type when, when era, I was right? yeah because I I was like at that point like in charge of creative but not in charge unofficially. Yeah. De facto. And I remember Bob's first meeting, and I Bob came came in, sat down, and I said, Bob, I said, I like your opinion. And he says, too much talking, not enough fighting. And I was just like, oh, good. <laughs> I agree. Now, were you were you a fan of, like, Husker Du or, yeah. or Sugar or, yeah. before that? I knew, I, knew, I knew Bob's work. But getting in, like, how the fuck do you... He said, I'll read a quote from him. Um, he said he had a friend. I had a friend who was working there. I'm trying to say, well, he, was, he was WCW, our... I mean. At that point, his friend was... He was a dark-headed guy. He was thin. He was, he was our... He, was, he had taken over for maybe Kip Fry or... He was one. No, this is after. This is. Let me think. It was was like, I think, it, Bill Burke maybe or, I forget what that guy's name was, but he had yeah he had like a, a higher up. Yeah, he said that, that he was. That uh, was a friend of his, and and he asked Bob to sit in. Ninety nine September of ninety nine. We're yeah, talking about yeah. Here. And uh, he yeah, said a was... position opened up at World Championship Wrestling in Atlanta. I had a friend who was working there. He came into more power, and he said, we want to bring you in as a consultant. So he joined the company. Uh, and he was on the road for, with you guys, right? He was like a, a legit. Yeah, and he would, we, would, we would do, uh, we'd, we'd write on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and we'd stay at the Hyatt Suites on uh, Windy Hill Road. And we would always go the first night. We'd go to Hashiguchi Sushi across the street, and Sullivan, me, Mike Graham, Bob, and me would would eat sushi, and carry our conversations on. And uh, yeah, no, Bob was Bob had good ideas. And so none of you guys, because we're talking about. I mean, Sullivan goes back to the '70s, and I mean, Mike Graham's legacy with Eddie. No one's skeptical 
that a musician, a musician wrestling fan, is coming in and given no, because I think legitimate. What, I think what happens is writing is you, power. You get to a point of it. You don't necessarily have to have been in the business to come up with a good idea. You know, a good idea is a good idea. So, but I think, I guess there was that perception right at one time that I think uh, you're, so, not I the, think you're so, an outsider. You're not I in the business. So, I think so earlier. I think so. You know that. You know, back when the you know one guy had the pencil, right, and he was booking. But as soon as it went to the committee, and there was eight or nine, you know, people, ten people in a room. I mean, it really just was a situation where it just bogged down the uh, the process. What about with the boys, though? Were they, were they more reticent to to take direction from him, or was he not giving direction to the boys? He was just writing. No, he, he no, he wasn't. He wasn't like a, a, a he timed matches and and worked like gorilla. He didn't. He didn't go and and and. and I think what the term they use it now is a, a producer, right? But back back when I was, you know, it was just called the agent of the match. Would he be like doing the like the the whole headphone deal talking? Yeah, to the refs, he, yeah, maybe, yep. He was, doing, yeah, time. t- t- times with the ref and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then developing angles with you guys, yeah. with Nakimori Sushi and all that. Yep. You you could knock out. All those pro writing, all those programs in two nights, just Wednesday and Thursday, because you guys had all right. You had Monday Nitro, three hours. You, you, no, you had to. This is what you had to do. You had to write. You had to write the next Nitro. Then you had to write the next Thunder. Then you had to write the next Nitro because we did two Thunders. So you had to write ten hours of TV in two days if you wanted to get home on Friday and see your family be- for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before you flew out Sunday night to go back on the road. And your run would be Monday, Tuesday, and then work Wednesday, Thursday, off Friday. Yeah. When, I mean, shit would change all the time, obviously, in WCW. So even <laughs> Nitro writing was very loosely uh, cemented, obviously. You had to be... I, and then I mean, you're writing two weeks in advance, you're saying. Well, I mean, the, the, second, the second Nitro was just kind of a blueprint to get to the Thunder, which, you know, a lot of times, fucking somebody would get hurt on that Thunder, and, you, of course, you couldn't fucking... You couldn't tell any story to get to that thunder because the person was down, so you couldn't use them that Monday prior. It was a fucking shit show. Wow, yeah. And how did Mold do? Good. Was he there till the uh, till the implosion in two thousand one? Or I think until I, th- I think he was there till Russo came in and Russo took over. Now back to Billy Corgan for a minute because he he. Um, he gets a spot in TNA as like st- creative talent development type situation, and um, I actually was brought in when he got that deal with to shoot the reality show. Yeah, what they were gonna do? The hell was that? I don't know if it's A and E or fucking AMC. 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 Yeah. Yes. So I. So I, I got I got brought in, and Raven was was on that with me. Raven and I went to a, a, a TV in Chicago together, and they were filming backstage, and it just they it, they were trying to shoot reality TV and cave Babe at the same time. <laughs> Somebody should have seen that as a bad idea before the cameras rolled. I, I concur. That was in uh, 2014, I think, right before, yeah. right before the TNA thing. Uh, 
he leaves TNA in November of 2016 after a dispute about not being paid on time. We know the feeling. And uh, subsequently, Anthem Sports and Entertainment and, uh, and Impact Ventures, the parent company of TNA Impact. Um, well, who still owns them. Yeah, he, uh, but now he buys in it. Doesn't he buy in at some point? It's, uh, in, t- in 2016, he loans money to Anthem Sports to fund TNA. And they... Uh, Guys, look up what, what Billy's net worth is. Alleged net worth. Yeah, alleged we, net we worth. We can't speak to the accuracy here. No, but they'll give it. it it's, I, I usually say it's half the time. It's either half or... So they're saying $60 million, so... They say um, they give Billy credit for the uh, the Matt Hardy uh, no, broken that, thing. That's just Jeremy Borash. But I heard I've heard that. But then I heard that that Billy was the influence. No. And uh, Dave Lagana. Borash. That's, that's all. That's it's all okay. Borash's. You heard it here first. That's Borash's paparazzi productions. Was me and Borash. Borash. <clears throat> Borash is. Absolutely, a, a breed above. Well, you know, I mean, he's he's Triple H is like right hand man. When you when you talk about outsider creative types, don't forget the oft unacknowledged B. Arthur years. Okay, like when I think Vince Senior gave her the book after losing a game of strip cribbage against Willie Gilsenberg and Phil Zacco backstage at the uh, Zemba that's actually, Mosque. That's actually when ba- ba- Bob Backlund got the strap. Shortly, shortly, yeah, after, shortly that, after that, after that. yeah. Arthur, actually, B actually booked, I think, a Carol Channing straight off of a Love Boat episode as a manager for uh, Moolah in an untelevised Tomahawk to the match mm. against Princess, Princess Victoria. I know you saw that one. Uh, I'm not, I'm, no, I, I didn't. I, um, though, though I'm a huge Gavin McLeod fan. I love a little Gavin McLeod in the evening. That's right. You are. You're like a fucking love boat junkie. Listen, I went back. <laughs> you and, fucking. How do you know this? Because we, we've we had this conversation that we've talked about guilty pleasures, and one of yours is fucking the love boat. I recently this year on a whim, like fucking around, I, I put on the, the theme song. I wanted to hear the opening song. Love, exciting, exciting and new. new. Anyone over 40 knows it. And uh, it's, I just wanted to hear the theme song. And then I let the episode play. And I just fell into the, the half mocking, half watching world of 70s episodic television and production. That fucking love boat. Fantasy Island back to back was about as good as it got. Was it Friday nights? Pretty sure. Yeah, Friday or Saturday nights, I think. You talking about a simpler time? Yes, it gets no simpler than that. Oh fuck. Actually I start like after a couple of episodes, if I leave that shit on, like if I'm writing or whatever, I start looking for the rotary phone. Jerking off jerking off to a Playboy. Exactly, little hand-eye coordination. I get up to change the dial on the yeah. TV. I actually tape the remote to the side so I can get up and like relive the whole thing. Grow my bush in wild and put, full. Put, push right by the Astro Glide and grab the KY. Yeah, the the horrific Vaseline oh. beating in the shower. Hey, what about Freddie Prince Jr.? What interactions did you have with him? None. None. Just on Rivals when he came. He came back and. Uh, did the rivals thing? Is it true that he got that spot after kind of like an impromptu conversation with Stephanie? Like he he and Macaulay Culkin are in Orlando for the Hall of Fame or WrestleMania, both, I guess. And um, he's uh, he's like introduced to Stephanie, and he's a guy with really cool ideas, but also a, a famous actor. Um. And she's like, hey, you should talk to the old man. You should talk to my dad. And uh, he's given an audience with Vince and hired? 
This is what I hear, that it was all that kind uh, yeah, of... Yeah, I, I wasn't there. Happenstantial. Nash drinking his colostrum, his uh, his plastic tit. You can uh, probably hear it. Uh, getting. Um, excuse me. But uh, that, I mean... Can, just, I didn't even think the the draw of celebrity, unless it's like I don't fucking know, like uh, who the biggest fucking lady He's dog, or whoever huge, the biggest pop star in the when, world would when, be. When we did the when we did the rivals the rivals show, man, he fucking he, that guy knew his wrestling, man. He was yeah. a he he had watched it from you know from conception. It was like fucking he knew he knew wrestling. Yeah, I mean, no doubt he was he was a legit fan, but through a conversation, which what the quote I'm reading here is that Steph was impressed that he had notes on the brand without crapping all over it, and that alone was a suggestion for an audience with with the Godfather. Well, I think at that point they had like, I mean, they had so many fucking writers. I don't know. Was it was it that dense? I walked in there at, at, at times, man. And it, I, I didn't know if it was a if they were writing wrestling or fucking they were running a fucking boiler room, <laughs> you know, fucking right. selling penny stock. I didn't know what the fuck was going on back then. I think he took his entire salary in company stock, so as not to, I guess, dampen the bottom line. Oh well, fuck! Or darken it, the bottom it line. It was a good move. If he's if he's still got it at 108, a you're share. over 100 now, right? 108. He got burnt out though, from what I hear, right? Total burnout. I think what he happened. Was a new dad, I think. Wasn't wasn't it something like where Austin cut a promo and it was like it was about some uh, like a woman that wanted to get into wrestling, and Steve said, "Ben, if you want to." To, she wanted to get into wrestling and to make life better for her, her family. And he said, man, if you want to make life better for your family, don't get in this because you'll never fucking see your family. And he... You're right. He heard that. He heard that. And he, 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 like gave, he walked up to the gorilla and gave Vince his two-week notice. That's correct. Yeah. I, I only know that because you sent that in the <laughs> notes to me. <laughs> I don't want to act like I'm fucking smart over here. This is all supposed to be off the cuff, isn't it? Huh? This is all supposed to be off the cuff, isn't it? Yeah, but we're just good actors. This was this was Saturday, fucking in in the park, (laughs) about an hour with Kevin. Hour, an hour before the show, we're like, "What? What? What what do you got? Nothing. I got nothing. I'm watching the. I'm watching. I'm watching the Miami." New York Knicks game, fucking Miami's up nineteen. I'm, I'm like, well, thinking to myself, if I go down, if I go down to the condo and start the show by myself earlier, I'll catch the ending of the game. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, uh, you th- thought we were rolling at five today, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Who, who today? You've met other people in entertainment, <laughs> obviously. As, as as I as, as I sit. I come down here and you said, no, we're, 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 we're going at six. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So as I get on Twitter for the first time in like six days and there's my mug saying, see you at six. <laughs> I'm like, wow, maybe if you fucking looked at your, picked up your phone occasionally. That's one thing people like that, that, that are around me, they'll sit there like, dude, do you, do you even look at your phone? I'm like, yeah, I, I look at it. Occasionally, like you know, well, you're not phone obsessed like the younger generation today. It's an appendage. My fucking kids, they get out of the car. They're like, I, I can't carry. I only have one hand. I said, No, you can carry because your other hand is holding a phone. They think it's a, like an appendage. They think it's it's a finger. It's legitimate to say I only have one hand because you got it's your fucking ch- phone in your it's hand. It's a chip. Good Christ. No, who today in entertainment? Who could who could be in creative? Who do you talk to, Adam Rodriguez? Who is it that would make a good writer for WWE or your friends at AEW? Your close friends at AEW. Close billionaire friends at AEW. I don't know. Nobody talks wrestling to you on a set? No. 
Joe, Joe did. Joe, Joe, Joe was a was a wrestling fan. Joe Green, mean Joe Green of no, of Ma- Pittsburgh Ma- Steelers Maglia- fame. Magliano. Oh, Joe Maglia. That's it. Yeah. Maybe you can get him hooked up. Do a run in. He's got the body. Probably because he gets a full goddamn night's sleep. God, Ooh. isn't that the isn't that not the magic elixir? So I'm gonna, seven weeks. Well, sleep me can help one get there. The sleep me sleep systems. Are you someone who needs a little recovery from the last workout, or maybe you just sleep hot in general? I do. My fucking sausage body gets too hot, heats the bed up, I get very uncomfortable. But since I slipped this over to my side of the bed, this has not been an issue in weeks. I'm loving it. It's a mattress topper. It goes over your current mattress. You don't need to buy a new mattress or anything. It uses water's thermal powers to cool the bed. It's circulating constantly through the bed. The cool water being pumped up from below. Um, it can cool your bed to as low as 55 degrees. That means no matter how hot you get, you can sleep at your ideal temperature. Sleep Me makes customizable controlled sleep systems that help you improve your entire well-being. They work on all bed types, even adjustable ones. Are you worried because your partner likes a different temperature than you? No sweat. They offer configurations to to allow for dual temperature control from 55 degrees up to 115. Even if you like the idea of getting in a cold bed, you can uh, schedule a temperature change. All right, So start the night in a cozy, warmer bed, and then your pre-programmed sleep system schedule automatically cools down once you're asleep. Okay, There's nothing worse than laying there and not being able to sleep because you're uncomfortable. Trust me, guys. I use this every night. Sleep Me sleep system. Currently, Sleep Me offers two water-based systems, the Doc Pro and the Cube. Both sleep systems provide uh, mattress toppers that cool as low as 55 degrees, okay? If you need better athletic recovery, you're tired of being hot when you try to sleep, being uncomfortable, you got to check out Sleep Me at sleep.me slash Kevin. That's sleep.me slash K-E-V-I-N. Plus, as a listener of this podcast, you're going to save up to 20% off on a sleep system if you use the promo code Kevin. This really is a game changer, and you really need to check it out, okay? Sleep.me slash Kevin. Save up to 20% for using the code Kevin. All right. uh, It is time for your public, your public to reach out to you. Like Franco Rivera, who says, love you guys podcast. It always makes my Mondays go by with a laugh. I love the pizza talk and was wondering when you were playing at UT... Did you ever go to Big Ed's Pizza in Fuck Oak Ridge? Fuck yeah. Yeah? You remember yes. us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Big Ed was a man. He was a, every bit of 300, if not more. Good for him. He's happy he, as he, like threw, he threw it. And Oak Ridge is where the, you know, that's where the whole nuclear fucking, oh, you know, that's a, the, the birthplace <laughs> of nuclear fission. Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And Ed's Pizza, as I understand. And Big Ed's Pizza. I, 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 I'm not kidding you. I probably have been there. Eventually, we got a Mr. Gaddy's actually on the strip. Um, but, um, yeah, I used to go up there. At the time, I was dating one of the Oak Ridge boys. So I, I, would, go up, I would go up to, uh, go up to Oak Ridge and get a pizza. Cut a few tracks. Get blown. Get blown in a, in a in a in the back of a truck, and then you know. If this is is what, Big Ed what, still there? Yeah. Wow. I I, I, that's, I heard it's still there. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll find out. Send photos, people, um, of that. Not Kevin with uh, one of the Oak Ridge boys. BC, Kevin. What were your thoughts on the old uh, World War Three battle royals in WCW? I liked them at the time, but man. They just threw any guy with a pair of tights out there. Thank you for getting me through Mondays. If it wasn't for me winning the uh, Battle Royal in Auburn Hills, I would not have made it to Starcade in 97. Now, the format of the World War III Battle Royals uh, differed how? Made no fucking sense. Correct. Good answer. Everybody started in the ring. It was like, you know... 
It was that WC <laughs> WCW never never understood that the reason the rumble works is because fucking people running down and the you count actually down see what's and, going on in the well, it's, and it's, it's there's the anticipation of who's next and you know is it going to be somebody from the past? Like there's so many intangibles that you can be excited about instead of just starting out as this person said with a bunch of every motherfucker that showed up that day with a pair of tights, right? So. I remember as a kid, though, I used to dig like the MSG Battle Royals in the 70s where everybody from the card that night was in there at once and yeah, trying to though. figure out who's going to win. And um, OIF, I, 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 you got to help me with this. I had to say this name um, to the individual there. Uh, uh, OIF, IIOIF 0709 Vet. Maybe it's a military thing. When the Iron Sheik was caught with hacksaw in an attempt to save kayfabe, should the WWE have used this to incorporate a storyline where the American hero got brainwashed into an Iranian cult, kind of like the MAGA folk these days? I think that, didn't they wait, wait, wait and do that with uh, when he joined the Iraqis? <laughs> yes, inexplicably, <laughs> yeah. they threw Sergeant Slaughter together with Adnan Al Casey and the Iron Sheik, who became Colonel Mustafa. Every time that we were on the road and somebody. <laughs> Would during the daytime if it were if we were were because we we couldn't smoke back then, but we could you know we could drink at all t- at all times. So we we'd have maybe you know it was like ah fuck let's have a couple of beers in the afternoon, and uh, we'd be driving and somebody would like like tip a beer like going through an intersection or something like that, and somebody would inevitably in the car say, "Keep it fucking down." That's how fucking Sheik and Duggan got busted. <laughs> <laughs> but they were fucking doing the fucking gimmick. Yes. <coughs> oh, the fucking. You ever hear the, hear the story where uh, Sheik's going through customs and they've, like, they get, they've made a bust and there's like the drugs are, are back there and the fucking the Mounties are, are, are going through it and Sheik says, Oh, Mr. Mounty, uh, maybe small sample for the Sheik. And then another time, they're going through, and Sheik's got like a like a half a, a half an ounce of coke, and he's they're going through, and he takes it out of his bag and throws it into John Nord's bag, Berserker, and fucking they get through customs, they they they, they, they get to the building, and Sheik says, Ah, Nord, I have my cocaine in your bag. Nord's like, why are you bother from Nord wanted to kill him? She couldn't like what? You were already beaten. He didn't understand. No, he was already through. Unbelievable. Yeah. I can we can we do a chic segment every week just so that he's a part of this show in some way every week. Fuck, he's a part of he, the, the chic is the fucking he's he's the man. Maybe maybe a Nash and maybe a, an upcoming Nash and friends with Kaz. What if we could get Kaz on? I think we could. I mean, I could, I could get to him. I, I don't. I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know how he's doing. I hope he's as entertaining as he once was. I'm gonna have to look into that. We have to do that. Right? Um, you ever see the one when he's gonna pull his cock out on fucking uh, Howard Stern? I put like ten inch cock. <laughs> we were, that was on Opie and Anthony, and I was there. That we were promoting the um, the roast. We were sitting there and. Opie or Anthony or, or Jim Norton, whoever was up there at the time, said, we will plug you every day, Sheik, if you pull that out and we could see if it's 10-inch. And he's got his hand in his fucking pants. And he's looking at, at, at his father, Eric Sims. He's going, Eric, I do it, Bubba? I do it? Eric's looking at me. I go, a plug every day all week. A plug. There's only a few of us in here. Take it out. Take it out. And I, he stood up, and I, something happened. He was in front of me. So from my vantage point... I wasn't able to meet gaze. I, it might have been negative inches because I didn't see anything protrude also from, from my vantage point. So I, so, it was, uh, so I think he did it. But that was on Opie and Anthony. Yeah, that was amazing. Well, obviously nobody fucking put it over, so it must not have been. No, I, I, I don't think much was going. But it was, also, it was very cold in the studio. You, know, you get a little nervous when you're on air there. So you know, I understand. Um, how about questions from the audience? I'm sure people have some uh, some things they'd like to ask Kevin. We have any of those ready, ready to rock? 
Kevin has a wrestling character like Diesel, Undertaker, or Hulk Hogan. Was it annoying or insulting if people come up and address you by your real name back when the business was more protected? Never bothered, man. But did any, I mean, did anyone ever call Hulk Hogan Terry back then? No, I did. Oh, well, you. But I'm talking about some kid looking for an autograph. I, I think I used to drive him crazy because I used to call, you know, I used to call Lex Larry, you know, St- St- Sting Steve. It's I, one of those. I, st- I still call CM Punk Phil. I just, I, if I just. It's ridiculous. If I know well, I real, think so too. I, I know you're, you're a real fucking a name, right? No one on the set of Taxi called. No, you know, da- uh, uh, Danny DeVito, L- Latka, or, Latka. Or, you're right, Latka. <laughs> Actually, he might have demanded he be yeah. called Latka. Yeah, basically, that's true. Um, thank you, David. Anyone else in the audience want to send something our way? You will be heard. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric loves my shirt uh, tonight. It is, a, it is an Express shirt, so you can get this at Express for Men. Um, it is actually- they all say they can also get it for Express for Women. <laughs> well, I left the goalie out of the net. You had to fucking shoot, huh? Fuck it. We're, we're down a goal. Uh, you, got, you, got me suck, you got me sucking Biden's cock. Fuck. I can't hit you with a woman's shirt reference. <laughs> Fuck you, moved, you. You graduated to the Oak Ridge Boys. <laughs> I think they call that a step up. Uh, uh, Ryan Chenoweth, I met HBK in 97 at my sister's work, Walmart. But my sister met Nash about five years ago. She put me on the phone with Kev. Do you remember somebody at a Walmart putting you on the phone with uh, with a worker? With a, with a, a, a worker at... Uh, you remember a worker at Walmart no, putting no, you on the phone no, with her brother? She, okay. she, she met Shawn Michaels at her sister's work. Ryan met HBK there. This is we like two detectives at, at Walmart, right? But my sister met Nash about five years ago. I assumed at Walmart, and then she. Put I, I don't. Him on the phone. I, I don't. I don't think I've ever been in a fucking Walmart. I was going to say, boy, that's a, that's a revelation there. No, I, I, I really don't. I, I think one time I went were to... You look, were you looking for this shirt? Yes. And over in the fucking uh, Jacqueline Smith collection. <laughs> a whole dick Kev you can have right now. Instagram, a wrestling historian, says, uh, what's a money match... That Kev wanted to do, but didn't happen for whatever reason. Thanks for in advance. A, a main event match that you would have wanted to have that never happened. Shit, me and Austin. Just timing. I mean, I was, I was, I was as close as you can get. I was, I was runner up. I was Miss Congeniality yeah. at Wrestle, <laughs> WrestleMania eighteen. Right. Um, let's see, uh, Sean Kitts. Steve and I were, Steve and I were too close. He didn't want to beat me. Well, who would have done the job? There's the question. Oh, you know, you're both professional. Hey. You would have done the job. I'd have done the for job Steve. for fuck God damn, man. In a heartbeat. Sean Kitts would like to know if Jackknife is going to be available in any other states anytime soon. What are you hearing about that? Uh, no, we're, tr- we're, tr- somehow Flair came down here and did some, uh, it to Florida and did some some personal appearances for Drip, and I'm like, how the fuck did that happen? I talked to my guys and they, so then I talked to Rick about it and Rick's Rick's looking into it for me. So I'm gonna see if we can get some jackknife moved around. Maybe if we, I'd be happy if we just get the bitch in Florida so I could smoke it. All right. Call Ronnie. He's busy with Disney. Uh, anything else from the audience before we go? All right, our next partner has a product I have used. I use. Um, they've been with us for a while, and I remember the first time I drank Athletic Greens AG1. Okay, I did it initially myself because I had some gut issues that I wanted uh, to straighten out. And... Um, I was taking supplements. I was swallowing pill form supplements. 
But um, when this came along and I saw that I was going to be getting 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, I jumped on board. And I was talking to Kevin, and he jumped on board. He has his whole morning routine with the tea, and he's starting with the AG1 too. And um, listen, uh, not the worst byproduct is it actually tastes very good, thank God. And the blend of ingredients supports your gut health nervous system, immune health, energy, recovery, focus, and even aging. It's super healthy and tasty. It's got a very subtle tropical-like flavor. Um, I dig it. it. I made it part of my daily micro habit. Makes it easy to absorb key nutrients without modifying my daily diet throughout the day. I nail this first thing in the morning. It's the first thing I have. Then I move on to my tea like my friend Nash does. Listen, lead a healthy lifestyle. Feel your best no matter what the day holds. One scoop, one minute, and one glass of water once a day, every day. Now, right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different things, pills, supplements, to look out for your health. Now, to make this easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. You throw in your bag and take on the road. Those of you watching, that's what you're seeing right there, the travel packs. I have those too. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash click, K-L-I-Q. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash click. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you, AG1. Lindsay, uh, besides Jimmy's and Sabatino's, what's your favorite restaurant in Baltimore? Mm. So it's kind of hard to go against Jimmy's. I, I don't think I've eaten anywhere but Jimmy's in the last 10 years. No, which was Sabatino's? Sabatino's was the Italian place down in the, down, I don't know what that's called, that area down there. That was like that was flair like the, that was the like flair and all those guys used to go there so then you had to go because mm. flair was the, you know he was the champ so is uh is is Baltimore gonna happen in July we, is a live show happening what do you know about this do I have to get on the phone little literally it's that's a little, little. we should have uh, guessed from the name Sabatino I, I don't know it wasn't in a little I, Jewish area. I don't I don't know because are you booked? What's the deal? No, I'm I'm, I'm fucking wide open, but Jesus, I, it, That's what this this uh my my uh trying to squell my personal appearances is not done it doesn't went very well. It just seems like I'm on a fucking plane more than than I've ever been. It's just well, I mean, it seems that uh, that there's some stuff going on there, right, in Baltimore. Then, so it would maybe make you maybe be there anyway. If I we'll wanted, we'll if see. I wanted to get on a fucking plane, we'll see. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you've been doing plenty of that. Yeah. You, you are you booked pretty solidly. No, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm like one a month after oh. after I think my wife goes yeah. on that. It goes on that cruise. Uh, when I get back from, I get back from Colombia, and then I have like a week with my wife, and then she's gone for like fifteen days or sixteen days. Mm-hmm. So then after that, it's just like fuck it. It'd be it'll be nice just to just sit, sit and hang out with my wife. Yeah. But if you're not still doing that in July. Yeah, but I mean, I just I I, I don't know. It just it depends on we'll what, you know. Somebody's going to have to make it worth my while. Brandon Douglas, if you could have won the WCW Tag Titles during your first uh, run, who would you have wanted to be your tag partner? And why would it have been El Gigante? <laughs> El Gigante. Love the show, you and Sean Rock. It wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been me and El Gigante. Who, who the fuck was going to work? Um, <laughs> George, get in there. I'm tired. I would have liked to have had Arn. <laughs> Arn? Arn, yeah. That motherfucker's a workhorse. Me and Arn would me and Arn wrestled we wrestled some some matches together. 
uh, when I was growing my hair back, I was underneath a mask, and we wrestled the Steiners for a couple of loops. We had good matches with them. I got I got to ask you something about Arn. I uh, I'm I'm another project I'm working on that you know about. I've had to watch the NWO parody of the Four Horsemen a couple of times uh, to cover that. And um, you, of course, did Arn in, in a very unflattering light. Uh, what was your relationship with Arn before the segment, after the segment? Did it change at all? It was great before. It was not. wasn't great after. As many times as many times as I have apologized. Um, but you know what? The the way so I. I it's very stiff. There's there's no way to deny that. Very consistent with the NWO characters, though. They would have been behaving that way. But something, though, that somebody that's very close to you said to me when we were working on this was um, it was pitched by Terry Taylor and could have been the stupidest thing. You guys go out and imitate the horsemen. So in the wrong hands, if you didn't go all the way beyond the limits it could have just been a bunch of bad impersonations not pushing the envelope so you almost in, had to do that to make it work that was in, that was in Pensacola and it was crazy because it's the first time I've ever done anything and maybe the only time I've ever done anything where the response of the crowd was more like a comedy store than it was a wrestling arena they didn't it was just laughter. It was like you know, like you would that you would pop them, you know, throughout the skit, and it was completely a different. It was wild to be you know in front of nine thousand people doing basically stand up comedy, but just actually just kind of improv, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of improv. So yeah, I just, I just I watch it and I say, "There's oh god," and that there was that was before anybody did a parody on anybody. It was the Macho Mads and a couple of things, you know. After that, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you. you they're saying here the receipt with the. You, there's a receipt where Arn fucking drills me. It's on tape too, where he comes down and I'm on the apron or something like that. And he drills me. It's, it's a good receipt though. Mm-hmm. Understandable. Under yeah, I didn't fucking. I didn't. <clears throat> I, I called it even. Everyone's a big boy. Oh, uh, hi, Kev. Are you a fan of any of the Napa Valley wines? Asking because I've bottled some from that area and you like wine. That's from Smiley O.R. Yeah, Napa's as is, is good an area as you're going to get. What, um, <clears throat> what, what, uh, what grapes specifically are they? Uh... Cabs. Cabernet, yes. Yeah, especially Hall mm-hmm. Mountain. Very good. Hull Mountain is the only uh, area that gets a little shade, so you got a little, little succulent grape over there. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a fine time, Kevin, to remind everyone that Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat. Producer Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Ash, and Sean Oliver, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media, Kev, if everything goes well in Columbia, let's do another one. Would you like to? Yeah, hopefully fucking I'll be out of pain. You'll be able to headbang. Oh, I don't know. I won't be doing that, but fucking... Man, if I could, if I could get 70% of this pain gone... Ugh. Mm-hmm. Well, good. I, I hope it does happen. And everybody else, don't forget, tomorrow night, uh, if you're uh, listening or watching on Monday, it'll be Tuesday... Uh, May 16th for the uh, Nash and Friends watch along where uh, it's Kev, me, and uh, X-Pac, Sean Waltman, uh, all together having fun, and you will be with us asking questions and having fun. And I'm going to do a half hour on the Cody Rhodes-Brock Lesnar match alone. That'll be immediately following Nash and Friends. That'll be called (laughs) Nash Alone. (laughs) Nash Solo. Deuces, y'all. Peace.